many of you out there feel like you're drowning in data? How many of you stay awake at night because of Excel spreadsheets like this one? <laughs> well, even for those of you who did not answer yes to those questions, I'm pretty sure that for each and every one of us in here, our lives have been impacted drastically by the amount of data that now surrounds us. I work in the field of data visualization, and you know, it's those pretty pictures that seem to be all the rage these days. But creating effective visualization goes beyond just being able to program or to apply an aesthetic sensibility. It actually requires skills to deeply connect with and to understand people. Now, I actually came to data visualization, or came to love it, from a, a bit of an unusual place. It was the year 2006, and that summer, I was about halfway through my PhD in computer science, and I managed to land an internship at the Chicago Tribune as a science writer. I loved this job. It was so amazing. Every week, I got to learn about a new and exciting science topic. I got to talk with scientists about research at the cutting edge of their field. It was incredible. I also found it, though, really, really challenging. Because in my engineering courses, they hadn't been teaching me how to engage with people and earn their trust, or how to ask questions about a field that I knew absolutely nothing about. Um, a couple years later, after I finished my degree, I was working as a postdoc at Harvard, and I found myself in conversations with biologists all around the Boston community. And I would talk to these biologists, and it turned out I had no idea what they were talking about. And so I found myself going back to those skills that I had learned as a science writer, how to engage with them, how to earn their trust, and how to get them to tell me what I needed to hear in order to design tools that were effective for them. So that they could ask complex questions like, how do you compare a human and a lizard? My collaborator, Manfred Grebherr, was tackling this question by comparing the human genome with that of the lizard and looking for regions of similarity between the two. Ultimately, he hoped these sorts of comparisons would shed light on how our genome encodes who we are. When I first started working with Manfred, he was relying on plots that looked like this one. And here what we're looking at is one human chromosome compared against one chromosome for the lizard. And each one of those dots inside indicates a region of sequence similarity between those two chromosomes. But for Manfred to look across his complete data set, he actually had to look at over 300 of these plots. Not only did he find them unintuitive and overwhelming, but it turned out they were hiding some critical subtleties in his computational results. So I worked with Manfred for a couple of months, and I designed a new tool for him called MISB. And here I'm just showing you a screenshot from one part of that tool. And I designed MISB to support data like Manfred's, data that was complex, that was multidimensional, and multi-scale. Now in this view, in the outer ring, we're looking at the human genome. And on the inner ring, we're looking at that of the lizard. And that inner ring is then also augmented with one user-selected chrom chromosome from the outer ring that emanates a set of colored lines. And each one of those lines represents a region of similarity between the two genomes. Now, using MISB, scientists can quickly explore their complete data sets and build up an intuition about patterns that are contained therein. This is actually, when it comes up, this is a screenshot of the very, very first data set Manfred loaded into MISB. Now, by some measures, this is relatively aesthetic. There's lots of colors and circles. Everyone loves circles. But for Manfred, what he saw was really ugly, messy data. He had no idea his model was producing so much noise, that there were so many lines going to different places. He spent a couple of weeks tweaking parameters in his model, and he was able to get but this far. At this point, he scrapped what he was doing and developed a brand new model, and that model gave him this data set. Now, he and I have both gone on to, to publish um, papers on MISB as well as on his new model. And I asked him afterwards how long it would have taken him to make this breakthrough using the methods he had available to him prior to MISB. What he told me was, honestly, I don't think I would ever have gotten here. Yesterday, we heard Zach Lieberman lamenting about the fact that technology today is still designed so that it looks flashy in a large corporate convention center. But Zach and many other people today are really pushing on that by asking the questions of what is it that we should be building as opposed to just what can we build. And in data visualization, what we really need to do in the same vein is move beyond thinking that visualization is just about pretty pictures and to instead embrace that it is a deep investigation into sense making. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
Gilles.